Hey everyone, Rob here, and I got some breaking news. A lot of updates came out about the Icelandic earthquakes and potential eruption. And we're going to start with this article coming out of Vsir, who, as you can see in the headlines, you know, we have a uh, Magnus Tomé, he's a professor of geophysics. He says, those who chase, choose to stay in Grindavik should be prepared to leave the town extremely quickly. Now, the volume of magma is similar to that on the eve of the eruption in December, which happened on the 18th. And in the event of an eruption, it cannot be ruled out that fissures will open within the city limits of Grindavik. The situation on the Reykjanes Peninsula is similar to what it has been in the recent days, according to Magnus Gudmundsson, professor of geophysics at the University of Iceland. Now, land rise is still being measured at Svartsvengi, and there's a high probability that it will end with a volcanic eruption or some sort of magma intrusion. Now, a new report, which we'll get to from the Meteorological Agency's website, states that earth earthquake activity is similar to the last few days, uh, and there's still quite a bit of seismic activity, but it's mostly confined to the area between Hagafeth and Stora Skogafeth, where the center of the magma tunnel is located. Now, there has been some discussion that the activity may be transferred to other volcanic systems, and Krusevik has been specifically mentioned as one place, as you can see here, again from the headlines on the news. Uh, in this context, now, volcanologist Haldur Sirsun said in a post on his website, in the morning that shallow and deeper earthquakes around Krusevik could be a sign that there's a horizontal magma intrusion there. And it may be a sign that there is a high probability of an eruption uh, in the area. Now, magma says, however, that neither seismic activity nor deformation data indicate that anything like that is happening. Uh, but, you know, if we're looking at de decades and centuries, it's not unlikely at all. It's just not, you know, probable. But if we look at this situation where we see signs that something's going to happen, we don't see them right now. I, he doesn't know what the future holds, of course. But he says there's no signs that this is a more likely place in Krusevik than any other. Now, of course, Svartsvengi and Sundnukskitja, that series remains by far the most likely sources of an eruption, which is just north of Grindavik. However, it can't be ruled out that it'll be further south and level will flow in towards Grindavik, which is why they've been building this giant defense around the north of Grindavik. Now, the volcanic fissures could open even within the town limits. And Magnus says that people take a certain risk by staying and spending the night in Grindavik, uh, which you know you see him here. When the defenses are up, which they're building, they're working on that 24-7, uh, the danger will not go away, you know, but it'll be less. Until then, the entire sort of town... And the whole sort of idea of protection must be available in Grindavik and, and sort of letting people know the danger. When a situation like this exists, certain risk is taken. And the question is whether it's an acceptable risk or not, which is uh, something that they're constantly, constantly looking at and talking about with Grindavik. Now, taking a look at some of the data here, this is coming out of the meteorological agency in Iceland. This, again, earthquake activity remains fairly similar to what it has been for the past few days. There's still quite a bit of seismic activity, but it's mostly confined to the area between Hagafelt and Stori Skogfelt, where the center of the magma tunnel is located. Uh, they do say that there is still some seismic activity in Fargsfelt and has been ongoing since December 18th. Land rise is still measuring in this area of Svatsangi, which has generally been fairly stable since the eruption on December 18th. The red dots on this image here that we're looking at uh, shows the measurement of the GPS station in Svatsangi. Land has risen approximately 5 millimeters per day recently, and the level is now about 5 centimeters higher than it was measured before the magma flow on and in sort of the earthquake series on November 10th. And of course, December 18th of last year. And you can see all of these, these charts down here. Model calculations that they've made based on the deformation measurements, which is using a combination of GPS and satellite images, indicate that the volume of magma that has accumulated in the horizontal magma intrusion under Svartsangi since December 18 has now become similar to the amount that escaped and flowed from there and formed the magma tunnel that erupted last December 18th. That means that there's an increased risk of magma flow in the next coming days. It's important to, to emphasize, they say, that magma flows can lead to an eruption and that the last eruption began at a very short notice. The Meteorological Agency 
issued an updated hazard assessment map, which of course we see here. And they did this on January 5th, and it will be reevaluated again on the 12th, so just a couple more days away. Now, relative measurements of the GPS station in Svatsangi from the beginning of October 2023 in the north, east, and vertical directions, so it's the you know, top, middle, bottom. Um, and then, of course, they have a, a bottom curve, which uh, shows the land rise in millimeters. And today's measurement is shown with a green dot. So if we zoom in here, we can see this bottom one here is, of course, up. You can see the land rise hitting a peak and then dropping, going back up to the 18th, hitting another peak, drops down a little bit. And then, of course, now we are back up at the top. So that's why they are referencing the fact that we are basically looking at an eruption any day or even any hour. Some sort of you know eruption, some sort of earthquake event, something is going to happen because now we are in similar events as we saw November 10th, again, is uh, sort of right here. And then, of course, December 18th with the eruption. So that's all the news today. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you're coming to Iceland, if you're at the Blue Lagoon, how are you feeling? Does it feel safe? My mom is coming on Friday morning. And the funny thing is, is I'm at this point now thinking, is the eruption going to happen before she comes or when she's here? So either way, uh, she's a little bit nervous about, about it, but uh, she'll be fine. It's still safe to come to Iceland, so I think that's a really important thing to say. I'm going to do an update. You know, who knows? Maybe it'll erupt when she's here, and we'll do an update with her to get her reaction coming from Canada to a country with an impeding volcanic eruption that's going to occur any day. And uh, who knows? Maybe destroy Grindavik or, or be in the town, or it's going to be safe, or the Blue Lagoon. All of these are definitely possibilities so it's important to uh, to keep in mind what everyone's saying the last thing that we want to take a look at seismic activity that's been going on in the area as you can see there is very little and there's a good reason for that in Iceland it's been very windy the weather's been terrible and these meters and measurements that they're getting it's very difficult to detect smaller earthquakes when the weather is just really crappy so we've had high winds and that's the reason that we're seeing seeing a very sparse seismic activity when compared to uh, to what we've seen previously. It would be unfortunate if uh, you know an eruption or something happened in the middle of a, a big windstorm, but that's the reality of living in Iceland. If you want to take a look, you can of course go to veder.is and take a look for yourself. And you can see again a lot of activity up in the north, but of course in the Reykjanes Peninsula. We're seeing the most of that activity and you can of course see as well the storm started uh, on monday you can see how there's the cluster here and then it starts getting sparse in the north not as much of a storm as we have in the south so that's why you're getting that so that's it for the news i hope you enjoyed it again leave stuff in the comments if i missed anything let me know how you're feeling and thank you so much for watching